<laughs> is, that, is, that, is that what we got together? Better. All right, I'll take two. Uh, Bunny Drums has been together uh, since 1980. We've been together for about five years. Uh, in that five year period, uh, we've done amazing things. Like what? Um, Wait, wait a minute. Let's 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 get a little. Okay, so don't worry. This will just. We'll All right. it. We can Basically, what you yeah. want is you like uh, on a question like this. Do you how how much detail do you want? You want me to start like rambling or? Yeah, ramble. And okay. Also, and also, and also yeah. 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 And okay. also, uh, the spots are not going to be more than five names. minutes long. Okay. So just keep, keep we're that in mind. We're going to cut out a lot. Yeah. Okay. So you can do whatever you want to do. Yeah. Just our feature of William Burroughs. All right. Bunny Jones has been together since 1980. About five years. Um, we started out as uh, two bands, and the two bands uh, became one. It was beautiful. Um, about 1980, we got our first show with Paraubu, and from there, it's been just all uphill. It's been incredible. We've played Japan, Australia. Our first European tour was pretty amazing. Um, I guess the first European tour was the one that uh, I remember the most. That was uh, last year. Uh, we have uh, several records out. Our first record was uh, on Meta Meta, was Little Room and Win. From there we did uh, Feathers Web, uh, four song EP. Uh, we were in the studio for a pretty long time and uh, oh, PKD came out of a lot of studio work. Uh, that was our first album. After that album we came out with a flexi disc with Switchblade on it and later recorded uh, Another EP called On the Surface had about five songs on it. Um, and uh, Best of American Underground Trouser Press, it was a compilation tape of uh, about 10 American bands from 1977 on. And uh, our most recent record's Holy Moly, the new LP on Fundamental, which uh, is doing amazing in Europe, Australia, Japan, and here in the States. So it's independent again. Is that what you want? It's, Do you think being independent gives you more creativeness? Uh, independent is not really what we want. That's how we work best right now. If we could uh, break out, get a larger audience, uh, play more, and uh, reach uh, more people, that's really what we want. It's not. Uh, we don't go for an independent label or an independent. Um, audience or just a circulation. We want to be as visible as possible so we'd really like to step out and maybe hit like a larger label and hit a larger audience. Well, what, what is your audience right now? How would you describe the people that come to your shows or, or buy your records? It's, it varies. Uh, our audience is not um, anything I can put my finger on. It's uh, a little bit of everything. It's like our music. It's, it's pretty eclectic. Because a lot of people have written that um, they say you're like you're non-commercial or you're arty, and then I and I kind of wonder how you guys feel about that. Always being referred to as a, a dark side of America, or a non-commercial band, all that kind of stuff. Um, I wouldn't say that uh, we're deliberately anything. We don't deliberately go out to make dark music. We don't deliberately go out to be an art band. We do what we do. It's a it's a a collective of four individuals. Um, we play what we feel, we play what we feel doesn't uh, get enough exposure on the radio. It's, we're an alternative and the way we satisfy ourselves are, is by playing an alternative music. It's, it's just the way we are. How about Philadelphia? Has that helped or hindered you being from Philadelphia? Philadelphia has definitely not like hurt us. Philadelphia is our hometown. It's, uh, where we're based. It's our first audience was in Philadelphia. The first uh, sign of support we had was in Philadelphia, the East Coast. I say that Philly's um, has been real positive. The scene in Philly has varied a lot, and the bands that we've uh, played with have been uh, like great. Philly has a lot of talent. It's I think it's a fine place to be. It's it's as good as any other. Do you think there's a difference between the audiences here? You say the audience that you played with in Japan or, or in England, or, or how are they different? Well, the people in Japan are much different than the people in Philadelphia. Uh, first of all, they're shorter. But um, other than the fact that they're shorter doesn't really affect how they respond. Now, their response in Japan was incredible. Australia was a little different. Um, that road warrior element, don't be fooled, it's real. And we were scared. 
But uh, Europe, Europe is, uh, that was a trip. I, it's, and people are the same everywhere. You know, people asked me the same question when we were in Europe, and they wanted to know if uh, the United States was different. And uh, my answer to them was, no, it's not. Uh, you guys speak funnier, but uh, other than that, it's pretty much the same. So what are some future plans for bunny drums? Uh, future plans for bunny drums is to continue to build, continue to uh, play music that's uncompromising, that we enjoy, to, to expand our audience, to put out more records, and to uh, become a, a, a more powerful uh, performance band. How about some, what are some of your influences, you and the band? Oh, boy. Influences. I'd say that that is, uh, uh, that's, that's hard. Um, just about everything we listen to, like influences, and everything we do influences. So I, I'd say, in terms of music, um, I say it can go from anywhere from uh, some of the people we've covered, like Link Ray, uh, the Stooges, uh, and then there are people uh, like Lou Reed and the Velvets, um, Graham Parsons, Merle Haggard. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's hard, the cramps, it's hard to say. There's just too many of them. There's too many to like pinpoint. And our influences also uh, stretch out beyond music. Some of the things we read, uh, Philip K. Dick for one, has been a, a big influence on us. Uh, sci science fiction in general, movies, uh, TV commercials, um, it goes on and on. Just modern pop culture, how do Yeah, I like to exploit modern pop culture. Love dirt roads. Um, I love sunsets and sunrises. I think everybody in the band could uh, relate on that. Uh, in fact, a lot. Um, there have been many occasions where we've all gotten up at five, five thirty in the morning. We've met and uh, sat on a, you know, a, a curb and just watched the sunrise. It's beautiful, and the band does that together. We play together and we watch the sunrise together. That's it. Those are you covered the things. That's, that's 10 minutes right there. Really? I don't yeah. get another shot at this? <laughs> Maybe you okay, want to yeah. 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 give an opportunity? Yeah. yeah, you can bring other guys in on this one, too. I'm doing a show for a... It's not a camera. It's not overall awesome. Okay. What obstacles have Well, I, I think if I, if I sat down and really thought about it, I'd answer these questions a lot differently, and maybe uh, with a little more substance, but... This is different from what we're doing. We can you ever talk about any obstacles you've run into as a band? Like, gigs you're playing, or... Sure. The, the, the biggest uh, obstacles maybe be, uh, like, a prejudice uh, that American bands run into. Um, and that independence run into. Um, it's a visual. <laughs> but um, I'd say, I'd say, like an English band, for instance, will come over and they'll definitely get the headlining spot. And on the road, a lot of times, uh, if there's a, a, a double uh, show where we're like sharing the bill with an, an, another band, usually if it's an English band, they'll get uh, the headline. There's nothing to matter with that, but there is a prejudice. The audience has it. The club owners have it. And I think that that's uh, something that we've run into. Uh, an independent, uh, we can only get our records played really on college radio, and they've been a, an incredible um, support for us. But other than that, we haven't got any commercial uh, exposure um, and money. You know, the economics, to keep a band on the road, to keep a band happening, to keep a band uh, just uh, surviving is next to impossible. So trying to live a normal life is... Uh, Forget it. Okay, um, you want to talk about image or lack of an image, like Prince has an image and all that. Do you guys, what do you, how far do you think an image is needed to take your band to the top? I think an image is needed, um, but we've never been like, like really conscious of our image. Uh, sometimes we're a little more wired than others, and that like is reflected in our attitude or how uh, people perceive us. But uh, yeah, to answer the question, we. I think a, an image is definitely needed. I mean, <laughs> oh god! All right. Um, if this camera wasn't here, this would be so much easier. Yeah. Well, the projector's not there, Dave. Like, All right. Just look at Lee. Yeah, yeah, Next one is. Uh, Please stop, Dave.
Yeah. One, one of the bands we did was McGrath. They broke up, you know, and they were big stars in July and stuff. How's your band tightness as friendship? Because we've I've seen a lot of backstabbing with band members as the uh, band gets better. Um, in terms of of uh, how the band gets along, I mean, I think one of the the real strong part. Uh, you guys aren't making this easy, you know. Look into the camera, Dave. Look at Lee. Ah. Ah. How do you how do you answer a question and, and like throw the the how do you answer a question and ask the question at the same time? You want me to like? Uh, Talk about how you're you're <laughs> but, not, not real well. Are you guys still friends? After oh, you, the band is real tight. You want, you want to do it, Frank? No, I don't want to do it. <laughs> um, everybody gets along except for Frank and I. And that's, uh, oops. Um, testing. Um, all right. As far as uh, how the band, the relationship of the, each band member, I don't think uh, there are too many bands that have it as good as Bunny Drums. We've been together, Frank, Greg, and I have been together now for almost seven years. And uh, it's family. It goes beyond being friends. And as far as uh, you know, other bands do it, I don't know. I mean, I've always been curious about that, too. But our goals are different. Okay, you were talking about placing emphasis more on your doing your indies or um, doing live shows and touring. Where do, you, where do you try and make stuff grow? Or where do you place more emphasis in putting the albums out or getting there and doing it live? There's not a... In terms of priorities, it's all equal. Uh, we have to put records out. We have to play live. Uh, what happens in the studio is real different than a, a live show. That's, that's obvious. Uh, when we're in the studio, we, we have uh, a record to make where, where we have technology to deal with. Like The studio is like foreign to us, and we have to work within the, like, the limitations of a studio. We have to try to make the best record we can and we get into the crafting, we get into the exploring of like sound, we get into like creating an edge on vinyl, which is different than live. When we're live, you know, we just do what we do, and there's a different high playing live. And out of the two, there isn't a preference. I think uh, we enjoy doing both. We just acknowledge that there is a difference between the two. We try to get the same edge on record as we do live, and we try to do them both as well as we can. We try to have fun, and we try to like project uh, an attitude and an edge. This is the last one. It's kind of a two-part question. Um, describe what well, you did with him. That was a band in Philadelphia. Can you go to the last one? Are there too many too many bands competing for too few clubs in the area? No, uh, there isn't. Uh, competition is is not an issue. Um, there can never be like too many bands, and there can never be like uh, uh, like a problem there. I mean, everybody like everybody has a different thing to say everybody's got the energy everybody's trying to express themselves one way or the other uh it's open ground and as far as like competing for um uh like a prime time or uh, you know uh, a headlining spot i don't think that's really an issue i think that um like everybody's entitled to uh as much power as they can get and the harder you work you know you get there it's interesting that you say that because most of the younger bands that i talk to say the opposite of that. And I wonder if you say that because you guys have been together longer. You've been together at least four years or five years compared to these bands that have been together six months or a year. And most of those bands view you and other bands that are around Philadelphia as their competition. And younger bands do view you as competition. You know, there is, and uh, I mean, well, what do you think about that? I don't think they should uh, perceive us as competition. They, clubs need clubs, that's the problem. Yeah. That has nothing to do with the, the competition. Well, I, don't I, don't think, I don't think that more clubs would, would mean that there would be less competition. That, that people in that situation would feel less threatened by somebody who has been doing the same thing for a longer time and, and has, has built up connections or whatever, has paid a little more dues, uh, knows a few more people, uh, can, has a bigger audience and a bigger draw just because they've been around for longer. They know more people. They're assured that in, you know, at the door. Um, there's reasons why. I mean, you know, we, we were together. Play that often, so we we I mean we play once every you know 
five months or six months in Philadelphia, so it's not like we're, we're competing for other bands. We're competing with their own No, I didn't mean that you guys... No, no, I it's... Mean it's, that it's, it's that, but I, I didn't mean that. I meant that I thought it was real interesting that you guys don't even think that way, and so many of the younger bands I've met do think that way. Well, that's, and because, that that's because they're younger. I think it's, it's a, they're at the point where they don't understand what, what it's all about. You know, I think there's like, there's pay and dues. They're trying, they're trying to survive, and like I, I respect that, but uh, they, don't, they don't realize you can't really survive and be in a band and do non-commercial music and like uh, expect to get very far, you know, very easily. And it's not it's not like that. It's not it's not an easy road to hoe. I think our, our advantage is we were, that was we, were a good one. we were we were older, like we were a little more mature in that respect. We realized like uh, you know what what the scene was all about, and what what it had to offer. You know, we weren't naive in the sense that uh, we didn't feel like we were being discriminated against or anything like that. Yeah, there's no one out there dictating who has top spot. You know, like like you say, the McRad was around last year and they were happening. They broke up. You got to like stick with it. You have to be persistent. You have to have like a little bit of faith in what you do. You don't make money. That's, that's the problem. You don't make money doing this thing. It's not like a money, a money venture. That's the best of bottom line, I think. Economics are... It'd be easy if every band went out there and like, uh, made a buck and like, uh, they were able to survive in their, you know, in their integrity, but uh, that's, not, that's not the case. You think you're enough? Mm -hmm. Are you going to see the tape? Uh, yeah, definitely. I'd like to see that.